Now this poem is called The Dip Dog, and if you don't understand chewing tobacco, you might not get it. This is a true story, it happened on a ranch I worked at, and Devin's offered to help us out. The dip typically goes chew, dip, snuff, snooze, and what you do is you take a dip out of a can, it's all ground up nice, and dip. Devin will take a dip there, and he's kind of gathering it up into a little ball, and he puts it in his cheek, and then he gathers it up in his cheek. That's what mm -hmm. you call it, gather it. And then in a few minutes, he'll be spitting brown juice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thanks, Devin. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> okay, true story. There was this one old buckaroo. I'm sure you've met the type before. His behavior is not uncommon and you know just what's in store when he sidles up beside you in a bar or the corral, cuts loose with that lopsided grin and says, how about it, pal? Well, you needn't ask him how about what. You know the codger's broke and he's intimating for a handout, a drink or chew or smoke. Though he's making just as much as you, He's never ever holding his paycheck spent before it's cashed and no amount of scolding will compel this feller to put it up for a rainy day, nor does parasitism hurt his pride. He'll blow all his pay on some chrome hubs or a saddle or a lady up in town and come to you for the niceties, no matter how you frown on the unrelenting pressure to provide this beggar charity and if he notes of your distress, well, brother, there's a rarity. I knew of one old cuss like this, a rat's nest of these vices. He'd eat the best and drink the most and never ask the prizes till he'd blown off his whole paycheck, run up a tab to boot, in debt by Sunday morning. That boy could throw a toot. It was an aggravation, I assure you, because when Monday come, no doubt, he'd be standing there next to you, head hung down and hand held out. I'm a little short this week, pard. This place don't pay enough. I'd sure appreciate it if you could spare a little snuff. Well, perhaps you'd feel hard-hearted and tell him to go to hell, but the old dog kept on begging until you said oh well and got the can out of your pocket he'd say that sure looks good <laughs> take a dip at least two fingers three fingers if he could you're standing there your can's half gone he's puffed up like a squirrel relating how he blows his pay buying booze for some old girl which you didn't too much care about being in a fit of peak and knowing you'd be short of dip for another week. Well, I finally decided it was my Christian duty to show him the error of his ways and conserve some of my booty. I bought a can of Copenhagen. I emptied out about half the brand. Then I gathered some material from where the horses stand. I stirred it up a little bit till it weren't too tight and loose and put it back into the can with the remainder of the snooze. I mixed it up. It was too dry. I had to add some horsey water. I thought if anything will set him straight, this concoction order. Now when Monday come, sure as the dawn, here's the old cayuse. He sidles up beside me. Can you spare a little snooze? Oh, I guess I can. I answered with a demeanor rather cold, but you mightn't like it all that much. It's getting kind of old. Oh, that won't be, bother me none. I could surely use a chew. So I offered up that little can and tried not to show a clue of what I knew that beggar was about to masticate as he loaded up three fingers of that equine-tainted bait. He sticks the wad in his left cheek, screws eyeballs up a bit, rolls over to the right, 
and spews a stream of spit. He massaged it with his inside lip and rolls it back to the other side, screws his eyeballs up some more. He wasn't satisfied. I could restrain myself no longer. Forgive me for my haste. So I ups and ask the question, well, partner, how's it taste? He gives that wad another squeeze and ponders just a mite. Tastes about the same, he says, but it just won't gather right. <laughs> That's a take, I think. <laughs>